Italy, the home of pizza, pasta, Mario, Lamborghini man, and unfortunately the Euros as an Englishman. However, today we look at how that Italian team would do in Syria. How would they do in their own national league? Can they win it? Will they win it? Who will be the top goal scorer? Who will get the most assists? And ultimately, are they good enough to win their own league? Let's find out. So what we've done here is we've took Parma, pretty much the worst team in the league. We've took all the players out and we've substituted them all with the Italian team. We've got Roberto Mancini in charge. We've got all the Italian squad from the Euros in this. And that's what it's based on. So we're going to see what would happen if that Euros Italian squad was put into a team in the league. And see where they would end up. My initial prediction is they'd probably get first, maybe second, third. Depends, you know, you've got Juventus, you've got Milan, you've got good teams in this. But also you got to remember when a player gets put into this team, they're taking out another team. And obviously there are a few Italian players who play in the league. Some obviously don't and play in the French league, the Premier League. You've got the likes of Giorginio, Verratti, for example, who play in different leagues. So you've also got to take that into consideration. But yeah, this is the squad. We've got Sirigu. Merritt and Donnarumma. Obviously, to have Donnarumma probably start in most games. Centre backs, you got Benucci and Cellini, who are incredible players. Fantastic stats. Such a good passer, ball player. Stats everywhere are just incredible. Cellini, obviously, one of the best to ever do it. 19 tackling, 18 marking, 15 heading, good positioning. Unbelievable mental stats, he's just so good. You got the locks of Toloi from Atalanta, Kirby. We've got fullbacks like Emerson, Spinazzola, who also had a fantastic tournament before he was injured. Di Lorenzo. We've got midfielders like Verratti, obviously fantastic. Unbelievable passer, vision, decent tackler, very technical, unbelievable player. Jorginho. A Champions League and Euros winner this year. Unbelievable tackling, passing, just a great player. Got lots of Locatelli too. In the more attacking options, you've got Bernadeschi, Chiesa, who's unbelievable this tournament. He is fantastic, really fast, as you can see. Fantastic dribbling, as you can see. He is unbelievable. Got Barella from Inter, good tackler, good on the ball. Insigne, another one who's just elite player. Look at them stats. First touch 18, passing 17, finishing 14, vision 16, 18 flare, good acceleration. And also you've got elite strikers like Immobile up front, who's unbelievable, and Belotti too. So you can see had a fantastic squad. It's not surprising they won the Euros. They played so well together. Really good squad, very consistent, and they had that Italian solid at the back, hard to beat, but Mancini also brought a good attacking style of play to utilise them Chiesas and Signes, them Bellottis and Immobiles. Just a fantastic system, fantastic squad, fantastic players. So let's see how they did in the league. So in the end, they actually finished fifth, which really surprised me. I thought they'd be a lot higher up. Juventus won, followed by Inter, Milan and Roma. That was really surprising for me. There were six points off fourth, which isn't too bad, but it's still a long way off. There were 36 points off the top, which shows the big gap. Obviously, Juventus with the likes of Ronaldo, Inter and Milan with the likes of Lukaku and Zlatan, Martinez, Dybala, all these sort of players... They were just obviously too much for this Italian side. Finished above a few good teams like Napoli, Lazio, Atalanta, Fiorentina, But nowhere near the top, surprisingly. Had seven losses, two to Juventus, one to AC Milan, one to Roma. So a lot of points lost there. Already dropped six points to Juventus just in them games. 15 draws is a lot, which shows... 
actually what this team is hard to beat but obviously the attack style was not emulated in the game i mean you can look at the losses obviously it's five off how many juventus got only one off inter though and two off milan and they actually had less losses than roma but they had so many draws it cost them the draws gets milan lazio atalanta and even loads of others and they would have had good wins. They would have had good wins against Napoli, Inter, Roma. Must have been one against Milan, I think, as well. So it's just such a shame this team got so many draws. Because it could have been so different. I mean, they've got... There's no... There's hardly anyone else who's replicated that many draws. Goal difference was 12. Again, that's due to the draws, too. So we're going to have a look at goals in the season. See where any of the players we had were. So Immobile, 11. So joint 9th. Top was seven, so eight off the top goal scorer. But you still got the likes of Lukaku, Martinez, Dybalo, Zapata, Ronaldo. So a lot of good players in this league still. Average ratings again, we had quite a few actually in the top list. Obviously you got Ronaldo, Dybalo up front, but then you got a Kirby who was really good. You got Benucci who was sixth for average ratings. Barella in tenth, Immobile in twelfth. Donnarumma and Di Lorenzo in 18th and 19th. Obviously that does seem quite low, but you got to think how many players are in the league. So actually, had quite a lot of average players who played really good. So maybe the team did play well, did do well, but they just couldn't score enough goals or they just couldn't break out of them draws and just win. Assists, again, quite low down, I think, actually. The only one who made it was Barella with six, so... I presume that means that a lot of the goals were... So I presume that means a lot of the assists were actually spread out. So clean sheets. Donnarumma got the most with 17. So that's 17 out of 38 games. So we're going to have a quick look at how the league went. And what went wrong, really. Um, started off with a loss to Roma. And then a draw, which doesn't help. Went against Inter. Then a loss again. Draw again. So there's a lot of points dropping here, a lot of draws, just a lot of draws. I mean, look at this run, one, two, three, four, five draws, a win, and then another draw after. Had a better end to the season, I guess, but very inconsistent, a lot of points dropping everywhere. Against the big team, draw against AC Milan, draw against Lazio, win against Napoli, win against Inter, Loss against Lazio, win against Roma, win, loss against Juventus, loss against Milan. So all over the place, pretty, pretty average. They didn't do too well as I thought they would do. I thought they'd be a lot more consistent, get a lot more wins, not draw so much. They've just dropped points here and then everywhere. There's no like, oh they lost to all the big teams, there's no like, oh they lost to all the mid teams, oh that's probably it's all the bottom teams, it's just like a, it's dropping points here, there and everywhere. The only other thing I said was the cup, they won 2-0 here, 3-0 on the qualifying fourth round. The Italian Cup first round, they beat Napoli 2-1, with Immobile scoring one of them, but then they were knocked out in the quarters by Lazio, by Milinkovic Savic. So, quite a disappointing season in all. I mean, you think a team that won the Euros could do better, but then again, how good is international football compared to club football? Could France beat PSG? Could France beat Bayern Munich? Mm, you know, it's, these are questionable decisions. So, in the end, a bit disappointing. Didn't do horrendously, but just were not consistent enough. Didn't challenge enough. And this team would be in Europa next year, essentially. So, champions of European football, but not champions of Italian football. So, that is all from me today. Thank you all for watching. And please like, subscribe, and I will see you all soon.